How's it going folks? I've been out this morning doing a couple of air runs and meeting the folks over at Silky Saw and uh, buying some bits and pieces and I've come home to a bit of catastrophe with the aquaponics so get ready for a little bit of a um, cautionary tale. When we got home from our little running around and air runs today we noticed the sump was very low. I don't know if you can make it out down in there but the pump is actually exposed. It was making a very awful noise. Now what's happened is this pipework has come off this drain and the far drain as well meaning that all the water in the sump tank has been drained out uh, it's not very wet down here which leads me to believe it happened pretty early today luckily though even though i use venturis the fish are fine down in there because i also have two air stones running in the system at the moment because it's summer uh, hotter water holds less dissolved oxygen so I have no idea how this happened, but that's beside the point. What I need to do now is fix it. Something I've always meant to do but haven't, which is my own fault, is um, zap a couple of 316 stainless steel um, screws through there. Now I can only find one left, so I'm either going to have to rob one from somewhere else, or um, I'll just attach or zap one through uh, that far fitting there, because that one there will be the one that, um, if, if it stays connected, uh, this end down here, um, should stay connected as well. So what I'm going to do is just remove this um, white Teflon tape from this end, the majority of it. If you can give me a hand, Kira. <laughs> Obviously, I put, put a lot on. I put a lot on, so this wouldn't happen. Then again, it's been up for a few years. You can look after that. We'll put it in the bin. I've already um, wrapped the other end. I'm just putting on the um, the pink um, Teflon tape. It's a little bit thicker. So you need less. I'm just making sure that um, some of it comes over the top here. Which I wish I had a camera to take a photo of. But I don't. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Um, and that'll just help when it pushes in the pipe. It won't push it back down. It'll um, stay in place. So that should be enough. So what we're going to do, Kira. Is if you could grab that end. And just guide it in place. And I'll try and do this one first. Radio. You might want to move your hand from there. It's fairly heavy, is it? No. Not really. Move your feet. Cool. Let's lift this up a bit. Is yours in place? Not quite. So I'm just going to um, chalk this one up for now. Now we'll just pop this end in. There we go. And pop that paver that I'm using to hold the drill <laughs> underneath. So I think it needs to come up this end further. Yep, there we go. That's pretty much all it. So I'm just going to pop through a um, 316 stainless steel screw. Uh, just with the screws, because we're dealing with this plastic, I turn the torque setting right down. Now I'll do this upside down. There we go. And that should hopefully, well it's worked in the past, it should be enough to hold this in place. But also too, these bricks wedged under here should do the right job. So that little fitting there is now screwed in place and I will be um, getting some 316 stainless steel screws for the other fitting. I need to top up the tank. Uh, luckily I do have a little bit of um, excess water left over here in this tank that I've been using to top it up. Uh, so what I'll do is just come down here, turn on this valve and go down to the sump. So the bell siphons are all out. The sump has been filled with the other water and I've popped the pumps back on. In here we have the um, moving bed biofilter. Just give you a bit of a look, churning away nicely. We have the radial flow filter. Whoops, where are we? There we go. Uh, she's flowing all good and proper. Uh, we do have no leaks on these guys here, but um, I've left it a while just to check because sometimes it takes a while for the water to make its way through. But they all look hunky dory. Down here there is a bit of a moisture um, pool around the uniseal there, but I have a feeling that could have come uh, just from this pipe being on a weird angle. I did check it, oh, you can actually see where the pipe slipped a bit in the seal there, there's a bit of a, a line, but um, the stand pipe looks to be upright, so I'm pretty happy with the way it's sitting. Um, the fish, the fish, I will drop the camera in tomorrow uh, just to give you a bit of a gander. Don't know if they're gonna come out. Yeah, it's a little bit too glary. You can see them swimming over the back. Um, it would have been a perfect time to test the dissolved oxygen level in there. 
but I was too concerned about just getting the water flowing through the system. Now the other thing I'm going to do precaution wise is I'm going to um, salt the system 600 grams of pure sea salt so what that will do is it will help uh, boost the um, slime coat of the fish and not only that it guards against nitrite poisoning when you're cycling a system uh, the reason I'm adding some in is um, because we've had that 600 litres or so wash out not only that we've had the system overflow with um, rain events here and the chloride level in the water would have dropped uh, the chloride by the way is what blocks the nitrite from um, giving your fish the brown blood disease or um, nitrite poisoning so definitely want some of that back in there so yeah a little bit of excitement for the afternoon uh, definitely not something i was planning i was hoping to give you guys a bit of an update on the system so what i might do is um, i might come out in the morning and we'll drop the camera in and give you a bit of a look at the fish and i might get to a little bit of work in the morning just tidying up the beds and i'll give you a look at the um the system after that so i'll catch you tomorrow so welcome to day two of the catastrophe that was almost losing my fish yesterday uh, i've got no further leaks down there with the joins or with this one up the other end so they seem to be um, holding water nicely i went out and bought some 316 stainless steel screws today so a little bit later when i work on the chook, chook coop i'll pop a screw through there just to make sure it stays on nice and strong i have the camera in with the fish um, yeah they they appear to be fine i had a little bit of a sneak peek earlier and they were all right a bit hard for you guys to see but yeah um, i'll show you some of the footage towards the end what i just wanted to mention quickly is about the venturi even though i do sell venturis and i do have the venturi um, clip the diy one thanks again cc bear i don't think they are the be all and end all in a system you do need some sort of supplemental air in there just in case a situation like yesterday arise now um, i lost no power so therefore the backup wouldn't have kicked in and yeah quite possibly if i was just relying on the venturi i could have lost all my fish i do think they're great for adding supplemental air and also running in things like biofilters we've got one running in that biofilter well it's a bit hard to see but you can see the little attachment down there that feeds it so in that situation they're fine but if you are running a, a rather sizable system with a decent amount of fish in there they they do require a fair bit of dissolved oxygen so i would seriously contemplate um, either running uh, air stones as well as your venturi or maybe just running the air stones um, so there's something for you all to think about it's a decision you've got to make for yourself so i suppose the moral of this tale is don't rely on just one form of um, oxygen in a system always have a backup and i'm very glad that i've had those um, stones in there because this isn't the only time i've pumped my sump tank dry and left the fish without any flow through the venturi so that's enough banging on about that um, I'll just give you a quick look at the pH. She's pretty much well sitting where she was this morning, 6.9. Uh, so it's fairly high. It was sitting 6667, but because I've added so much fresh water in and we have fairly high um, pH water coming out of the tap, I'd say it's bumped it up a few points by itself. Temperature wise, we're looking at 26 degrees, 25, 26 degrees. And I am also laying off the fish feed just for the next couple of days, uh, just because, you know, I'm stressing them out at the moment with having the lid open and also to um, yesterday if there's any damage done yesterday I'd prefer them you know not to uh, add extra ammonia into the system. Uh, as for the clean out I hooked into the um, Brazilian spinach over there. The spinach over the back I've um, pretty much well removed all of it. I have kept one little piece um, just over there that has uh, some roots on it and some nice clean growth so that'll go somewhere else in the patch. This little clump here, I'm, because it's so accessible, I've been able to get in here and squish any caterpillars I see. And the new growth is looking pretty good, so I'm happy with that. But this little clump over the back there was just too out of the way, a little bit too hard to get to. Plus I've got another little clump in that yellow barrel that I've been harvesting as well. So I, yeah, executive decision, pull it all out. So I've actually turned the um, water flow off into this bed at the moment, uh, just because I, I'm moving a lot of this media around. And I really don't want all these suspended solars to go flying through the system. And just to show you this, I'll just rub my hands through some of this media. I hope I don't squish any compost worms. But that's the sort of solids that are accumulating in this bed here. And that's mainly due to all this dead um, plant material. We've got dead bits of leaves, 
uh, from that big clump of Brazilian spinach just to composing on the surface and the, I'd say the um, compost worms are coming up for a feed as well. So this is another reason why you do need to clean your grow beds out um, every couple of years. I mean you can stretch it out to every four or five years if you rotate your crops well. But you know if you're going to grow a lot of plants like this that they do drop a lot of organic matter on the surface, they leave a lot of roots behind, you are going to get a build up of solids in your bed. So um, if, if you're smart and you rotate your crops really well, like you're growing a lot of greens in media beds, and as soon as your pak choy or your Asian greens come up to harvest size, you pull them out roots and all, you're laughing. The same with lettuce. So it's just one of those things. It's a routine I've never really got into here. I tend to grow a lot of um, plants like the Brazilian spinach that are uh, perennial in our climates mainly because they do so well in the heat here. Yeah, it's um, one little job I've got to do this afternoon is to continue going through here and picking out as much of this stuff as I can. I suppose I could leave some of it for the compost worms because this bed does need to clean out in the next year or so. So I've just run a couple of tests and even though we've lost close to 600 litres of water from the system, we've still got an iron level in there between one and two milligrams per litre or parts per million, so I'm pretty happy with that. The nitrate surprised me. Uh, we're still travelling at roughly about uh, 40 milligrams per litre or parts per million of the nitrate. So I really do need to um, plant out some of the vacant real estate in the beds with some leafy greens to take that up. Um, I do have some small Lockenown uh, spinach cuttings started in the barrel and I've got some more up in the house. And I will go down to the nursery and um, just spring for a couple of punnets of greens and get them in their ASAP. As soon as they go in, by the way, they will be sprayed with Dipole. Uh, that's the uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. It's safe for your fish, mammals, reptiles, birds, humans, or well, we're mammals. So um, they'll be getting a spray with that to try and keep those blooming cluster caterpillars off them. Um, so uh, other than that, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. Uh, the fish, they all look fine. Um, I wasn't too concerned. I did have a fairly good look yesterday afternoon. But um, yeah, it, it does make me feel a lot better to drop the camera in there and have a closer look. A couple of them have still got the battle scars from around this time last year where we had a, a slight issue with the system. Um, but yeah, other than that, they all look fine. So there you go. A little bit of a lesson for you folks out there. Don't rely on just a Venturi to um, look after the air requirements for your fish. Um, if a mechanical failure happens, not necessarily a blackout, you could end up losing them all. Always have some sort of backup in play, whether it's um, uh, air stones in the system running alongside the Venturi or a little float switch that uh, will turn the backup on once the tank level drops to a certain level. So that's something you could think about. So if you want to come back next week, you'll probably see what plants I've chosen to fill out the uh, vacant real estate in the system. Uh, hopefully it'll be Asian greens and bits and pieces like that. That will be in our weekly update vlog. So they're just a bit of a um, tack together clip made from different small shorter clips I've shot through the week. So come back and check that out if you're interested. Before I go, I do need to say g'day and thank you to all the marvellous folks who are helping to support our channel through Patreon. You can check it out through that little link up in there. And also to, to our super contributors, all their business links and homestead and backyard farm links are down in the description below. So I do hope that this clip has helped you folks out. Hopefully um, not to make the same mistake I've made, either glue or screw all your fittings together. You know, don't think they're going to last. And also too, make sure that you have some sort of backup if you are running just a Venturi. You need something else in there. Um, it's a bit of a given. So I'll stop nathering on about that. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own patches and aquaponic systems are booming. And I will catch you next clip. Cheers folks and have a top one.